In today's video, I'm going to show you how to stitch on a binding using your sewing machine. Hi, I'm Kim from Chatterbox Quilts, and I want to go into the details of using a sewing machine, and in today's video, I'm using the Janome CM17, but you can use any sewing machine to do this, of course. And the reason why I like to machine stitch my binding on, I don't always do it, but the reason I like to do this is because it's quick. So sometimes when I'm under a deadline, like when I'm working on an island boutique project, for example, it's much quicker to use my sewing machine to stitch that binding down than it is to do the hand stitching. So let's get into it. Now, before I get into the quilt and showing you how I put the binding on there, because I attach the binding a little bit differently than some people do, I want to talk about the feet I'm using. Now, I mentioned I'm using the Janome CM17, and you could do this on any Janome model, or if you have another brand of sewing machine, you could do this as well. And I'm going to show you two setups that I like to use to do machine binding on my quilts. So one of them uses the foot that's already on the machine. This is the HP2 foot and the HP needle plate. So the HP2 foot comes standard with this machine and it is using the AccuFeed Flex system. So it's sort of like a walking foot setup. So, you know, you're feeding the top and the bottom along at the same time. And I really like that because you're going through a lot of layers. So it makes it that process a lot easier. The other setup I like to use is using the regular needle plate and the SD foot, the stitch in the ditch foot. Now this comes standard with the Janome CM17, but if you don't have it with your machine, it is an optional purchase. So let's take a closer look at these. Here's our regular needle plate. It's the one that has the wide opening. And the SD foot looks like this. You see it has an S and a D on it. And you can see that it looks similar to this HP2 foot. That's because it also uses the AccuFeed Flex system. So it also has that walking foot action. The difference with this foot, you can see it's much wider for one thing. And you can see it's got this guide that's going to run right along our seam when we do the stitching. And with this foot, I'm going to do some needle adjusting because I can move my needle position over a little bit and this foot allows me to do that. The HP2 foot I'm not able to do that but that's okay because I'm going to show you how well this foot works when I'm stitching that binding down on the Janome CM17. All right so now you know the two setups that I'm going to be talking about today and I'm going to show you how to use both of them. Let's get our quilt out and let's get stitching. All right, so I told you that I do this a little differently. I attach the binding a little differently than some people do. Usually when people are doing um, binding on the sewing machine, they will attach the binding to the back of the quilt and bring it around the front, which is kind of the opposite to what we typically do if we were going to be hand stitching the binding down, right? Well, I don't do that. I always do things a little bit differently. And there's a reason why, okay? So what I do instead is I stitch the binding to the front of the quilt, okay? So just using my quarter inch seam like you always do and then I will often press it towards you know out just to make it a little easier to maneuver around. Now I'm using a two and a half inch binding all right that's my standard binding that I use and so when I do that and I sew it on with a quarter inch seam and I roll it over to the back you can see how it is going to be a lot wider at the back than on the front. And that's perfectly fine because what I want to do when I'm doing this type of machine binding is I don't want to see my stitches on the front. Well, I try not to see them. Let me put it that way. When people are stitching the binding on the back and bring it to the front, you will see the binding, the stitches, I should say, on the front. You'll see them running along the binding. I don't want that. Okay. I want them to be as invisible as possible. So hence why I do it this way. And I'm going to show you, as I said, with those two setups, how that's going to work. Now, when I've got this all done here, what I want to be doing is running my stitches right in that seam, like stitching in the ditch, right? So that's what I want to do. And I know that because there is so much extra fabric going around to the back here, that we're going to definitely catch that binding on the back. So I'm not concerned about that. A couple things you can do to get properly set up here too. You can see I'm winding my way out back here and you can use clips, okay? So I have my little clip box here. So you can use little clips to hold that binding if you'd like. You can use pins, uh, you know, whatever works for you. And to be quite honest with you, I don't always do this. Sometimes I will just roll it as I go along and I will work that way. So whatever your preference is, whatever works best for you to give the best results, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to put these away for the time being here. 
kind of a noisy little box, right? And let's talk about doing this binding with the HP two foot and the HP needle plate that I've already got on the machine. Now, this is a quarter inch foot. This is usually what I will use for piecing. Um, so it seems a little strange that I might use it for machine binding, but I found it works really well because of the feet on it, the width of the feet in particular. So let's do this. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you how I handle the corner. So again, I'm just rolling this to the back, okay? And what I want to do is I want to get my needle right down in that area, right in that seam. Okay, so I'm going to put my foot down for a second here and show you a few things. So on this machine, I've got this nice little hand wheel. You probably can't see it, but it allows me to place my needle exactly where I want. Now, you can probably see my needle is not where I want. It's in the binding. It's not in the seam. Okay, so we're going to pull that back up again. We don't want to do that. And what we want to do is we want to move... I've lifted up my pressure foot and I've moved it so that the edge of that foot is running right along that seam because then when I put my needle down, it's in the seam. So that's kind of a nice benefit of this foot that it works quite well for that. So when I start off here and take your time, go slowly. Um, this is like a walking foot action so you don't have to zip along and you get better results if you go slow as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am actually going to just... Um, tack my stitches at first. I've got a lock stitch on here or you can go forward and backwards, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to get that set right now. And sometimes I don't do this, I'll be honest, because my stitching is going to come right back over top of it, but it's just a little more secure, right? All right. So let me get my binding set up here as I go along here. It's looking good. I'm just going to take my time and make sure that the edge of that foot, the inside edge of the right foot, if you will, right toe <laughs> is running along the edge of my binding, okay? All right, so something else I neglected to mention to you is that I'm using thread that matches my, um, in this case, my binding's the same fabric as my last border, so that makes it kind of convenient. But because I am stitching in the ditch, you will probably want to match your thread to your quilt top, okay? Because this is a, um, a stitch that you or trying not to see, right? Uh, some other people will do machine binding and they will use decorative stitches where you want to see it. In that case, you might want to use a contrasting thread like I did when I quilted this, this uh, quilt. But here I am trying to match it so that you don't actually see that thread. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, and you can hear, I don't know if you can hear or not, but I can hear that noise. It's going right in that seam. I can hear the little kind of thunk noise that it makes. Okay, keep going. All right, so that's probably enough. I am actually just going to clip my threads here for a moment because we want to take a look and see how I did. Well, I did pretty good, I'd say. Okay, you can see I'm in the ditch, and if you bounce out a little bit, not a problem. If I'm bouncing out, I prefer to bounce out onto the border than bouncing out onto the binding. Okay, now, of course, the real thing is what's happening on the back. Well, like I said, we've got that extra fabric on the back, that extra width of fabric from that binding. So you can see that I'm definitely catching it. Yes, there's a bit of an edge here, but it's definitely caught the raw edge of the quilt. And because this is folded, I'm not concerned about this, okay? I'm not as concerned about the back as I am about the front, okay? So that is one way to do it. And you can see how well that worked. But I told you there was another foot I like to use, which is the SD foot with that regular needle plate. So let's get that on the machine and let's see how that looks. We've got that set up. Okay, I'm gonna pull out a little bit more thread, make sure it goes back in there. So a little bit different of a look, right? Pretty big foot, right? So when I put it on and I change up that needle plate, I've got a lot more options on the machine as well, but I'm still working with a straight stitch, of course. So how am I going to do this? Well, you can see that guide. So I want that guide to run along my binding there, right? And again, I'm checking to see where is my needle. Now, actually, this is working pretty well. This is just on utility stitch one, and it's working fairly well there, I think. So I'm just going to go with that. But if I needed to, I could, I want to raise my needle up when I'm doing this, and I could move my needle position over one way or the other. All right, so let's fold my binding. I didn't lock my stitches last time, so I better do that. Okay, I'm just going to lock my stitch here. All right, we don't want our stitches to come undone, do we? 
All right, let's fold this and go along. So I've got that guide right in the seam and we're gonna go along for a little bit here. And I will check and see how I'm doing. Okay, so it looks to me like I'm a little bit, a little, just a little bit on the binding, which I don't really like that. So we're gonna raise that up and I'm gonna move my needle position over a little bit to the left. I always have to, it's a minus on this machine, okay? And it's just an infinitesimal, you know, little movement. It doesn't have to be very much. And there we go. And that's looking a little bit better. I could unpick those few stitches if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that, right? Let's keep going. Yep. Okay, that's doing much better, I can tell. So we'll keep going a bit. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing a bit of stitching because I wanna show you what happens when you get to a corner because that's always the tricky part when you're doing this. So I'm just gonna go up to that and then I will show you how I handle the corners to make sure you've got nice, nice miters on the front and back. So now I'm coming up the corner, so I'm stopping. I mean, I'm still a ways away, but I want to give myself some room because I'm going to be playing around at the corner, right? So nothing worse than being in a tiny area, not being able to work well. So as I'm coming along here, let's take a look at this corner here. Okay, for this one, you can see that this one is underneath and this one's over top. So I'm going to do the opposite here. So we want this one to be underneath and this to be over top. Okay, so I can just do that. Again, this is the back of the quilt. So I'm not super, super, super fussed. If it doesn't absolutely perfectly meet up, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna put the rest of it down there. We're gonna keep going until I catch that and then I'm gonna turn the corner. Okay, as I get up here, I'm gonna lose my guide, right? Because I'm off the seam, so you can go a little slower. Or, you know, if you even wanna use your hand wheel, to make sure you know where it's going, do that, whatever works. Okay, so that's right in the corner there. So I'm going to lift up my presser foot here. And I'm going to carefully turn the quilt. There's a lot of quilt here to turn. <laughs> okay, let's turn the quilt here. Things are looking good. Let's just look at the back here. Yeah, we're still doing fine in the back. Okay, no problems there. So that's good, it's looking good. Okay, now let me get my binding set up on this side. We got the corner going, but we gotta get the binding flipped over. There we go. So now I'm turning the corner and we're lining up my guide in the ditch again. I'm just taking my time. All right, now I'm gonna stop and just check here and make sure I caught that corner. Okay, yeah, I'll show you that later. You might be able to see it there, I'm not sure. Let's see. I can see my miter's looking pretty darn good there and I've come across and caught the corner there. So that's good. All right, so we'll just keep going here for a little bit. All right, so let's stop here. I'll lock my stitches here. So obviously, I'm gonna have to come back and finish this. All right, let's get that out of there. So let's see how we did here. A little bit of extra thread here popping up. Sometimes that happens. All right, so here we are. So you can see either method looks pretty good. Okay, I don't wanna see that stitching, so it's a really nice clean finish there. Yes, I've got some extra fabric on the back here, but I am not too concerned about that. And my miter is looking pretty good there, I would say. And it's come across and caught that. And we're going down here as well and catching it. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm liking how this is looking. I like the fact that I'm not really seeing the stitches. You can see them a little bit there. That's because I'm on a different color fabric, but in the grand scheme of things, you're not gonna see it that much. So 
rather than doing it what most people do, I'm doing it a little bit different. So if you want to have a nice clean finish on the front and you don't want to see those stitches, you want to stitch in the ditch, I like to attach my binding to the front and move it to the back just like you would do if you were hand stitching it down. So now I've got to go finish the rest of this quilt and get it all machine stitched down and I know it's going to take me a lot less time than if I was hand sewing all that binding on this large quilt. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. Now while I talked about doing machine binding in this video, you might be wondering how I join my binding edges before I put that binding on the quilt. Well don't worry, I've got you covered. Be sure to check out this video that's going to show you my favorite way of doing that. For more helpful quilting information, be sure to go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.